the time actions in Playmaker uh, hide a whole lot of functionality. So let's dig through this and really bring to light a lot of what this can do for you. The one you're probably already familiar with is wait. The wait action under time will just delay an event. In this case, you can choose any event you want. I've got a start move, which is gonna fire off uh, just a little rotate on this cube. Uh, you can delay it by some amount of time. Say for instance, three seconds. And if you start the scene, you'll wait for three seconds and then that activity will begin. So it's a great way for you to hold off activities until a certain amount of time. And there's lots of reasons why you'd want to do this. In fact, you've, you're probably already using this in your, uh, in your games. But let's take a look at what some of these other things have to offer. I've got a little game object here uh, set up so I can add a few things. And I've got a GUI text object where I'm just simply outputting the value of a text output global string. Uh, so I can just update this and we can see right here where it says GUI text, what it is I'm changing. So here, if I add a get system date time, uh, it lets us store directly into a string. So I'm gonna just choose that same text output string. So it will output the system date and time directly to our GUI text object. And let's take a look. And there we have it. You can see that I'm recording this on the 8th of February, 2013 at 1642, which is, of course, a uh, 24 hour clock. But you can uh, format these, you can convert these a little bit. I'm gonna set this to every frame so I can adjust these a little bit as we go. Uh, you don't have to use just the uh, slashes, for instance. I could use spaces instead and separate them that way. I could add a lot of spaces and maybe a dash Maybe I would rather have a colon to separate stuff like this. And I don't even have to have them in these order. I can move this over here, do something like that. So you can totally rearrange and uh, get rid of some of it. Maybe I don't want the time at all. I just want the date. Or maybe I want uh, just the time. So you can arrange this in any number of ways. Uh, here's another example. Let's say if I just used the time. That's all I'm going to get. Maybe I just want the minutes. I can just use those two. So completely up to you how you want to format this, and it's very flexible. So get system date time. That is a handy feature if you need to know big spans of time. Let me remove that. And let's take a look at scale time. Time runs at a... There's a, there's a time value of one. Basically, that means time is going to run at uh, a value of one. And if I wanted time to slow down, let's say I wanted it to run at half that speed, this is game time, not real time. I could adjust it uh, with a scale time of let's say half time, I could set up a scale time action to 0.5. Uh, I could also use, say double time would be two. And stopping time completely, I could enter a value of seven. So here I've got a simple set of buttons set up uh, that will just change the value of time. And I'll let my cube rotate so you can see. This is normal game time running. And if I set it to half time, my cube's rotating at half the speed because the game is running at half relative time. Set it back to normal, we come back to that speed. If I double it, it moves at twice that rate. And I can stop it, which is handy for uh, pausing events or doing menus or you know any any of those kind of bullet time actions, any of that fun stuff you want to do where you play with the relative adjustment of time, uh, that's how you do it right there. You can use the scale time action, which is available right here in the time actions. Now, sometimes you've seen, for instance, on this cube, I'm using rotate uh, per second and also there's all over in Playmaker actually, uh, say like in the translate action. Let's take a look at that. There's another per second option. And the difference is that sometimes you do things in a game engine and they, uh, maybe you've got a really fast quad core computer or maybe you've got uh, say like an original iPad and you, you might have a, a difference in the amount of time it takes to render frames. So. Frames aren't really a good representation of quote-unquote time when you're talking about a game. So you can 
check against real time. In this case, do it per second, not every frame. Uh, and that will let you know that you are checking against real time and not just uh, this jerky thing. And that makes sure that if you set up your game to do something like, say you want to refresh your player health in five seconds, make sure it happens in five seconds rather than four or five and a half or some other arbitrary number that's close to five. So if you really want to take advantage of that uh, outside of one of these uh, actions that already has that built into it, you can use the per second action. Add that right in there. Oh, <laughs> that'll help. There we go. So if we add a per second option, you can enter a float value and it will check it either once or against uh, every frame and save it back out to another variable. So you can smooth this out against time. And in other words, make sure that your float is transitioning at a regular pace that is a regular amount of time rather than uh, something that might not be as reliable. All right, let's look at the last one, which is where a ton of features are hidden. If I come back to time and I look at get time info, add that in. Uh, it seems pretty simple, but really there's several options in here. So let's go ahead and take a look at what they do. Delta time is going to bring back the amount of time it took in seconds to complete the last frame. And smooth delta time is a smoothed out version of that same number. So if you want to set up some of your own uh, timing based things, you know, you want to smooth against it in some other way than just say moving or rotating or whatever, you can use this to find out how long it took between frames, which will help you uh, make a lot of decisions about things that are going on inside of your game. If you want to find out what the current time scale is, you remember when we used the scale time right here? Like there would be set to half and here it is double. Uh, if you want to get at any given time what the current time scale is, you can use that right here and it'll pass it back in as a variable for you. So you can check that out. Let me activate this. I have, uh, I'm passing this time value, which is a float. I'm passing it here to the text output global variable, which I'm outputting. So if I run that, it's now telling me that the global time is one. And if I adjust this, well, I'm not running it in real time, but if I were, it would be telling me uh, what the current time scale was. So looking down in the list, time and current state. That's pretty self-explanatory. It tells us since we've entered this particular state, how long has it been? And uh, actually, let me update that every frame. That's where we're going to get more interesting information. And here we go, counting it up. So it's telling us how many seconds we've been in this current state. And of course, if we leave this state, then it'll stop counting that amount of time. So you'd want to store it someplace if you needed that for an amount of time. Uh, you could start using another get time info in your new state to track how long you've been there. And this lets you do neat things like uh, how long has this animation been playing or how long has this character been in this AI routine, all sorts of things like that. We can also check the uh, time since the game was started and the time since the level was loaded. Time since startup is the time uh, from when you loaded the game. That means you can load many different levels, jump around, do all kinds of different things, and uh, this number is going to remain constant across all of them. Whereas in contrast, if you just check the time since this level, uh, right here it may look the same since we've <laughs> just got the, the game and the level, but this is only specific to this scene, right? This level or scene. If you change to another one, then it's going to give you a different number. Now there's a slight variation here at the end. This is real time since startup and real time in current state. These give you a number that seems similar, but uh, it scales much like we've been talking earlier. You scale against real time. That's what this will do. Uh, if I stop time, for instance, here, you see that this still runs because it's checking the real time. Whereas if I used the uh, just time since startup, not the real time, and I came in here and say half time, you see it's running slower. If I stop time, 
it stops there. So this doesn't mean uh, real time, it's talking about game time. So that's a good distinction. Time since startup and time since level load are talking about game time, and real time since startup and real time and current state are talking about real time. So there, in these five little actions for time, lies all sorts of really valuable functionality that you can use right here in Playmaker.